This is Eruri, where epic comes in many forms. Nine mountain ranges, coastline for miles, acres of dense forest. Millions are drawn to this part of North Wales every year. But this is a wild landscape. Hello! Where the best day of your life can quickly become the worst. Police emergency, how can I help? There's a little boy trapped in the mountain. And when a call for help comes in, the busiest network of rescue agencies in the country must join forces. How did you get here? Professionals and volunteers side by side. Keep going. Each team bringing vital skills and local knowledge. Helicopter inbound. Of how to save a life in a landscape like no other. Two casualties, one time changing injuries. Life is good when people help each other. There's a large element of luck in what happens in the mountains. Anyone can go over at any time and break their ankle. No one's infallible. And when things go wrong, the emergency services work together with volunteer teams, including Eruri's six mountain rescue groups. They save lives in places others could simply never get to. I joined Mountain Rescue because it's a really good community. Got that hand done. Just people from the outdoors willing to help other people in the outdoors. Trivan accounts for the largest amount of call-outs in our patch. It is in a fin shape and there's lots of gullies. Police emergency, how can I help? My partner's got herself stuck up Clyfan Mountain. So is she on her own, are they? Yeah, she is, yeah. So she was climbing down, there's like a ledge, and she can't get back up, she can't get back down. So she's had a panic attack. A woman called Kitty is stranded, alone, in one of Trevan's steep gullies. The Coast Guard helicopter is requested but it's already dealing with a serious climbing accident on the other side of Trevan. So the Ogwen Valley Mountain Rescue volunteers must begin the search on foot. Can I tell you about this one? It's just one female called Kitty. She's okay. quite upset. And maybe just go with you and one other. Okay. An advanced party of three set off to get to Kitty as quickly as possible. All right, Kitty, don't worry. You're getting so very upset. We're sending people up to you right now. She was quite distraught. She was in quite a scary place and she'd been there for some time. The problem we have on the west face of Trivan is that there's lots of relatively easy open slopes but you'll end up in one of these gullies that are then sheer rock below you. Kitty, we're going to send you a message that allows us to access your phone to put you on a map in our computer room. She's quite stressed. There we go. Um, She's sort of basically Western Gully. The team used GPS to work out the approximate location of Kitty's phone be for something else, so let's send her another Yeah, one. I'm not sure. So, if she's directly above us, we think so, yeah. They're on their way, they're already halfway up from the road, they should be with you, hopefully soon. We might not phone you again if your battery's running out. If, if, if anyone shouts for you, shout back. On the call, she said she only had 1% battery. She was clearly distraught. This was someone who was properly worrying for their own life. Thank you. 
be anywhere. Yeah. I'm not sure you're going to get a sighting yourself from there. The team should be able to see Kitty from the point they've now reached in Western Gully. But the GPS isn't 100% accurate, and this, combined with Sravan's ridge terrain, has led them to the wrong spot. On a relatively flat area, even if you were 10 metres out, you'd definitely see the person you're trying to find in the more gullied terrain. A small variation can make it much more difficult. Hey, base. <sighs> yeah, okay. We'll let you know what our plan is, but it looks like we're going to continue on it. Over. But 90 minutes into the job, the Coast Guard helicopter is now available to help. Trifan can be difficult to spot people due to its rocky nature. All the gorges run pointing outwards. The gully itself may not just run up and down, so we can look straight into it. It could be at an angle there, so we would have to offset the helicopter. The helicopter's manoeuvrability gives the crew a bird's eye view into Trevan's deep gorges. He's right over there. The helicopter has spotted Kitty. Yeah, it receives that, so she's below your position directly, over. She's in a perilous spot. It was horrible on that ledge. It was cold, it was wet. And I was there for such a long time. I think at one point I tried to climb back up, but it was so wet and slipping um, that I just I was too scared. I was too scared that I would I would fall. And worse, the helicopter can't get close enough to winch her out. She was on this small rock. So initially, we would try an extraction, but that wasn't possible due to her position, the topography, the wind direction. The helicopter came over several times, and you get this sort of sense of relief. It's like, they found me. And then the helicopter goes away again, and, and you think, where have they gone? The only way to reach Kitty is abseiling down from above. 98 she's going to pick them the further part here, three up, and we're checking we'll get and take them into below there so they can walk in over. So the Coast Guard helicopter goes to fetch the extra mountain rescue team members and gear needed. They're dropped 30 metres above Kitty, and the other team heads over to join them. Concerned about coming down Y Gully and kicking the stones onto the cars over. Yeah, she's off to one side of Y Gully, um, and as you just take your time and be careful, um, there's a fact of life on that side of Trivial River. Nearly three hours into the rescue, the teams come together and get their first glimpse of Kitty. Uh, she's a bit stuck. Yeah, yeah. We're just going to be never This is the thing that we yeah. never tried. Yeah. It's a good time to... You might throw it out if it gets in the way. Here, you can't really see them from anywhere, but when you're right on top of them, which we saw from the helicopter... Robin must abseil 100 feet down the gully towards her. This rock. It's a dangerous descent. Stop, stop, stop! Just one falling rock could either injure Kitty or knock her off the ledge where there's a 300-foot drop. OK, slow, slow, slow. <laughs> she 
she was actually stuck on a tiny ledge in quite a steep bit of a gully. It wouldn't have turned out well for her if she'd slipped further down. Stop, stop, stop! The rope's sort of going to pin you in a little bit. Okay. I'm going to step across in front of you, so just watch out. That. Okay, you're not going anywhere now, okay? Okay. Okay. I'm going to like put my hand behind you. You're not going to go anywhere, and those ropes are like the strongest things in the world. Oh my god, it was such a relief. I'd never been so happy to see people in my whole life. I think I was on the ledge for about four hours. I was just pleased that somebody was there to help. Trafalgar's a really special place to me. I went up that day to, to scatter my dad's ashes. He always said he wanted his ashes scattered up there so he could have that beautiful view for, for the rest of his days. I found a lovely spot. I just sort of sat with him, just sort of smiling to myself that I did what you said, Dad. <laughs> I got you here. You ready? Yeah. OK, if you feel scared, let me know and I can take you in tighter, OK? So just after I'd scattered his ashes, I tried to come back down the way I'd come. And as I turned round, some of my foot slipped on the loose shingle. And I slid for quite a little way. And I landed on this little tiny ledge. If I hadn't have gone down that side, I would have gone straight down the mountain. Safe to say, I'm, I'm not sure I would have been here today. The team is, is always trying to tell people that you haven't necessarily done something wrong. We are always trying to encourage people to come back next time, learn from your mistakes. Could easily be any of us out there having a bad day and we'd want someone to come and give us a hand. Mountains are what Aruri is best known for and make up more than half of this unique landscape. But volunteer rescuers here must understand other difficult environments too. In southern Aruri, Wales' largest forest, Coy de Brenin, covers 16,000 hectares. It's a maze of trails, pitted with former gold and copper mine shafts. I've lived there 20 plus years, and you can get lost in there quite easily. It's one of the hottest days of the year. A police officer in Coy de Brenin flags a serious situation with the control center. I've come across an elderly male who's broken down He's a carer for another 76-year-old male who's got dementia, and he's wandered off into the forest somewhere about an hour ago. The only information is the last known location of the missing man. South Snowdonia Mountain Rescue volunteers lead efforts on the ground. People would be going in teams of three from that position and doing searches, coming back, having another search area, going out, coming back. And the police helicopter, capable of searching up to two miles per minute, scans the area from above using thermal imaging cameras. Difficult to find anybody in that kind of terrain. It's such a, a dense woodland area. People could be four, five, ten yards left or right, and you could just pass them. 
The helicopter has scanned hundreds of acres, hoping the man might be visible in a clearing or pathway. But, unable to detect anything through the dense forest, it stood down. So husband and wife volunteers Esther and Tim I called in from SADA, the Search and Rescue Dog Association. It's really good working together as husband and wife. We each have a real appreciation of what the other one's doing. How long has he been missing? Uh, four hours. Oh, we're he's been... drive down to the second left. OK. And start from down there. OK. Yeah, we'll follow you down to the second fork on the left, yeah? We decided quite early on that I would work the most obvious route. Right. Each takes their own dog to search a different area of the forest. OK, we're going to head down to a um, bit of a closer location. There's been a lot of research. A missing person with dementia will tend to walk in a straight line towards his home address. You might walk through a river or you might walk over a wall and not use the routes that we would use. Go on then, away. Oh. When the search dog goes out, they will take a member of our team with them with a map just to make sure that they are covering the correct area. That's where you so, get yeah. off the road from. Right. So we need to basically work our way up. Oh, away. Esther's dog, Izzy, is trained to pick up on any human scent, clearing search areas as effectively as a team of 20 people. Oh, away. Forests are very, very difficult. Scent can lift up through the canopy, it will cool, and then it will drop in other places. So the dog has to do a much finer search. Izzy, don't go too far. That looks like quite a big hole. It's like a, a well in the middle. So it's my job as a handler to make sure the dog is put in the right position to pick up. She's definitely got some scent. Where are they? Find them, Miss. Find them, Izzy. Instead of me having to actually tell her where to go, she's hunting on her own. Show me. I was desperately hoping it was a missing person. Where are they? Guys, are you heading back up to your car? It's a false alarm. Despite this area of forest being closed off for the search teams to operate, these locals have come out looking for the man. Just head back, yeah. Yeah. Come here. They're only out to help, and I do understand, but their scent is going to be everywhere now. In this kind of heat, they can't work very long. I'll, I'll rest her in a bit. The team are also worried about how the heat might be affecting the lost man. The person with dementia must have been very, very scared just walking around for hours and hours and hours. They will get more agitated, more anxious, more distressed. Things are the worst, really, unfortunately. We've just completed our search. Five hours into the search, with darkness falling, fresh mountain rescue volunteers are brought in. When you're out searching, you want to find them, you want to help. But we're volunteers. I'm paramedic with the Welsh Ambulance Service. I start my shift at half past six in the morning. Facing an early shift and a two-hour drive home, Esther reluctantly leaves husband Tim to carry on the search without her. She's keen. Tim's Irish setter, also called Izzy, can identify a specific human scent from miles away. And now they also have the missing man's jacket, which she can use to track him. Find him then. She picked up very quickly and very positively on the scent. She was pulling really strongly. Gives me a lot of confidence that we're going the right way. Good girl. Find him, miss. The search area is narrowing 
thanks to the earlier team's work. And now, Izzy is clearly on the scent. <coughs> then, news comes in on the radio. <coughs> Thought now is that he's further up the road in the lay-by. The missing man has been found. Casualty is being returned to his home address by police. Yeah. The missing person was found by a member of the public. They were only about half a kilometre away from us. We're looking for the missing person. We tend to share that information with all people. I saw four guys walking, so I stopped them. If you see this person, give 999 a call. It was them four guys that, that came across him. Happy ending, yes. We shall uh, go home now and feed this one, and she'll probably sleep for a couple of days. Go out and find missing people and bring people home to their families. It's just such a rewarding thing to do. Rescuing people from this sometimes inhospitable landscape is, for many volunteers, a way of giving back to their community. For some, it's been a lifelong commitment. Well, I joined the team, actually, in 1974. The majority of the time, you were actually helping people. And that's highly motivating. I'm not as fit as I used to be, obviously. And, uh, you know, I can't keep up with the youngsters these days. And there's no point in me trying either. So I can use my experience and so on in a slightly different way. Yeah, go away, great. In the vehicle, really any information from the hill to the controller. We're going to be very effective at doing that. Cataritres is in the southernmost part of the National Park. It's actually an extinct volcano uh, which exploded. It's quite a bare, flat ridge. So it's quite attractive to people who are not that experienced, if you like, in terms of walking. A 12-year-old called Leah has fallen while coming down Cataritres and can't walk. She and her parents are stuck one kilometre from the car park, above the steepest section of the path. Mobile One's here, we're kitting up to come up to you. Volunteers from Aperdavi Search and Rescue start heading up to them, coordinated by Dave. This Sam and Hugh possibly are coming a little bit later on type of things. Somebody can't walk and they're two and a half thousand feet up a hill somewhere, then they've got a major problem. Uh, one six, mobile one, send John. Three first aiders have gone up. Stretcher party's gone up as well. It's not the nicest place to carry a stretcher. None of it is even. But we have done it a fair few times over the years. Leah was on a family day out when the accident happened. Is it your party we're going to? Yeah, part of it, yeah. All oh, right, OK. His little sister. I was walking a short distance behind Leah. And then all of a sudden, she was just on the floor, crying. Didn't take very long at all to realize. My daughter has got no way of getting off this mountain. Uh, one five, mobile one, go ahead, Phil. Uh, that's a stretcher party at the uh, fell gate now, over. It was really painful. Every time I moved my foot, it was really painful, and I knew that I still had to, like, get all the way back down because I'm really far. Leah has been waiting with her parents for nearly two hours. We all empathise massively, because most of us are parents ourselves. So it does up the ante a little bit. Mobile one is one five. That's a stretch party all now under John's jurisdiction as a site controller. Over. It was a sense of relief at that point that, that there was somebody else who would, would know what the best thing to do was. We believe we've got enough personnel to make 
Uh, yep, that's copied. We're just getting the stretching everything over, I Yeah, yeah, you ready, yeah? Yeah, yeah. They're ready for the stretcher. The team's first aiders think Leah has badly damaged the ligaments in her foot. She couldn't put any weight. Doki 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 ta yo bakama pusi kure jammi ho gasu tiki ni aya nari ya kai kai kao ami sa mo yo kare tama to pute kire wa su waku waku onasera mogegu yo. Nakimochi, weya weya, yami kabu, sekai, watakai, kedo, tajo nankana, mabu, sikigute, yami, no. Misurino, no sono mo, orrande, na mi gara misama, korupere kwara, kurimin sanara, harikibizara, ina wilisara, kurimin mada, ninana. Without our assistance, um, that girl wouldn't have got off the hill. Where do you want it, Gareth? I reckon if we'll be able to hover up to here, no problem. Uh, if we can get round. Just spin it around to the head, the, just to the head, that side, that's all. We've got something underneath her feet to stop her sliding out. Yeah, it might be worthwhile. It does go a bit vertical at places. We knew the ambulance was going to be extremely busy. It, it could be three hours, it could be six hours. You're okay taking it to hospital? And... Yeah, we're fine taking yeah. it. Yeah. Just to her, one of our other teams, they were being quoted at 90 minutes. So we ain't, get, we ain't gonna get anyone. It'll take a team of seven, two hours to get Leah back down the steep track. That is the worst bit of the path. From there downwards, there's a couple of handrails but not very many on some of the steeper sections, but it's very narrow. And when you've got a lot of team members trying to get around the stretcher, it can be very difficult. It was really bumpy. I didn't really know what was going on. I could feel every time like, we went over the bump. Nearly there, five or 10 minutes. You all pro? It's just amazing. <laughs> News that Leah is on her way reaches her family down in the car park. So they're moving down the hill fairly quickly. It gets a bit steeper now, doesn't it? A little bit, yeah. Do you folks want a sweet or anything? I had a feeling you might say yes. <laughs> yeah, we're just coming down the flight of steps now, uh, so we'll be with you in about 10 minutes. The casualties, grandfather and five or six other members of the party should be in the car park. I don't know if they've made themselves known to you. Uh, yes, indeed. They've just consumed half our chocolates, actually. So, uh, and they're listening to you at the moment. Uh, okay, thank you. Out. Anyone need a swap? The search and rescue team were amazing on many levels. Not only the team that, that came up the mountains, but the team at the bottom that were reassuring our family. At the end of the day, I'm just glad to be still involved and hopefully adding something to the team. Brace left up onto the fence. I really appreciate what they did, because if it wasn't for them, it would have been really hard to get down. I'm planning a charity event in school, and we're raising money for the search and rescue in Snedonia. Well, I just want to say thank you all very much. Oh, well. did. Yeah, did. Well, it's well, fantastic. Well, Definitely saved the day, yeah. It would have been a, a completely different experience without them. 
Just make sure you give us a five star rating on TripAdvisor. <laughs> of course. Everyone happy? Yes, thank you. Thank you very much.